Good evening, dear viewers, and welcome to this edition of Kume News. In our top story for today, the first prayer siege of 192 hours kicks off in Kume in the headquarters. The special retreat of Bola Theodore with the Youth and Life Movement is ongoing in Dumbi. The second edition of the ZCF Excellence Awards holds in Yaoundé successfully. Pastor Jean de Dieu pursues his evangelistic and exhortation tour in, the East, in Eastern Africa. More details in a short while. Stay tuned. Saints of the World Conquest Prayer and Fasting Center are currently holding a 192-hour prayer siege for the year 2022. The siege, being the 122nd of Phase 3, started on the 19th of December at exactly 8 a.m. The leader of the institution, Sister Esther Quonan, outlined some rules to the saints for effective battling through prayer. The saints then gathered themselves to follow the burdens of the siege, which are praying for Pastor Theodore and his ministries and the leaders of the Christian Missionary Fellowship International. The beginning of the siege was also marked with a visit of Pastor Theodore Andose, whose presence encouraged the saints to pray more fervently. The 192-hour prayer siege is scheduled to end on the 26th of December 2022 and many more saints are expected to take part before its end. This Wednesday, 21st of December 2022, marked the beginning of the two-day retreat of the Youth and Life Movement with Brother Theodore. Participants have come from various nations including Cameroon, France, South Africa, Canada and USA just to name the few. This first day of the retreat was the opportunity to thank God for the recent ZTF Excellence Award event in Yaoundé, which was a success with great results. To consolidate the gains, Brother Theodore instructed that the planning for the next year event should be done on the same day and contribution as well as responsibilities well defined. This plan in his shed should include what the ZTF University will offer then. Brother Theodore continued by bringing some corrections. These included the need to maximize the various resources, particularly with regards to the ZTF University, the need to see the ministry as an integral, as a whole, the truth that vision is a matter of elevation of where you are standing in your dispositions and elevation is relational. He illustrated it with the example of the Lord Jesus, who always identified himself in relation to the Father. The incapacity of many to work together like the Lord Jesus and John the Baptist did. The tendency to hurt others while striving to accomplish God's call. The need to end all identity crises. The need to end or avoid commitments that can be toxic. Besides, the leader spelled out the target of the meeting, which is to raise 10,000 missionaries who will harvest 1 million disciples in universities in 100 nations, in 100,000 campuses within the next 3 to 5 years as part of our strategy to accomplish our goal. Soft and delectable music, multitude of students and candidate laureates, scholars and administrative personalities, actually about 1,300 of them, gathered in the Yaoundé Conference Hall to celebrate 
academic excellence as manifested in the prototype of Professor Zacharias Tanefomum, a man of excellence on all boards. The second edition of the ZCF Excellence Award, which took place on the 17th of December 2022, aimed at awarding prizes to students and researchers who have been outstanding in their academic performances. Before getting to the award ceremony per se, Professor Fomum, his inner motivations, some secrets of his academic excellence, as well as some testimonies from people he influenced were briefly presented by various speakers. This phase was accompanied with a question-answer session to shed more light on the aspects presented. As concerns the award of prizes, 84 prizes in total out of 722 candidates were awarded. Of these, there were 61 excellence prizes, that is candidates who scored an average mark of at least 17 on 20, and 23 encouragement prizes for those who scored an average mark of less than 17. Prizes were awarded in three broad categories, secondary school students, graduates and postgraduate students, and student researchers. Prizes included certificate, a trophy and a check of 50,000 francs and 25,000 francs CFA for encouragement prizes for secondary school students, a certificate, a trophy and a check of 100,000 and 50,000 francs CFA for encouragement prizes for undergraduates and postgraduates, and a certificate, a trophy and a check of 250,000 and 100,000 francs CFA for encouragement prizes for student researchers. It should be noted that multitudes of books, including from his lips and a word to the students, were distributed, while 505 people manifested their desire to turn to the Lord Jesus. 80 of them attended the follow-up meeting on Monday, where they were thoroughly preached the gospel. Praise the Lord! From 13 to 19 December 2022, Brother Theodore went on a mission in localities in the northern region of Cameroon. This included Mara, Gide, Pitwa, and Mayokani Danai. The latter took place from 14 to 15 December in Kaeli. As part of a ministry rendered there, the leader disclosed from Mark chapter 14 verse 12 to 16 that there's a serious lack of workers in the province. And once this issue is solved, the harvest there could skyrocket and exponentially grow in a record time. To palliate to this, an annex of the School of Knowing and Serving God was launched. It would be in charge of training the missionaries in the province, taking into account the local realities. To host the annex, the CD's couple offered their home to serve as the first structures of the institution with a hosting capacity of 200 people. Indeed, the structures consist of four buildings, shared in two fence compounds, which include water supply equipment, kitchenware, and two big yards. Note that 1,117,450 francs CFA was raised both in direct contributions and pledges, as well as contributions in kind, including cattle, poultry, and grains. A leading committee was also constituted to run the annex, and the resources collected were handed to them as they were instructed to get to work immediately. And 24 hours after, the committee met for their first time. The meeting consisted in taking stock of the goods put at the disposal of the new structure. Besides, during this visit, Brother Theodore also urged the brethren to give to God and give to man as a key to becoming rich. He exhorted the brethren to apply this in all the churches. <laughs> Euh, tu vas les enseigner brèvement sur la loi de semailles euh, de et de récoltes. Hadra nous a remarqué qu'il y a du riz et non. Pour qu'il commence à donner à Dieu. Nous avons un ton ouvert, pas de ne pas. Mais ce n'est même pas pour ça que je veux te parler ce matin. Ama, nous avons Et il m'a dit, notre plus grand besoin 
dans l'œuvre dans le cani d'Anaï. Fait ma reine à de ça et de titre de John Ren, car elle dit qu'en est dans l'aïe ou non, c'est les dirigeants. Dis-y à la peine ou non. Caring, kindness, and compassion in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus Christ is the purpose of the Mercy Work Commission in the Christian Missionary Fellowship International. It is in this light that over 70 elderly persons were gathered on invitation for the charity banquet of elderly persons. The banquet, which in sound and color was held in Kume, within the headquarters premises on the 18th of December 2022. On the agenda was the opening prayer and thanksgiving, followed by Bible quizzes, dancing, the evangelism message and refreshments. Pastor Nicola Aqua, the Director General of the Headquarters, did not fail to bring to Lamlight the sole purpose of the ceremony. He said, we are here to preach the gospel and help those in dying need and anguish of pains like did our Lord Jesus Christ. However, he also said, we did not invite you here to compel you to remain with us through our donations. We will always continue to do this regardless of you staying with us or not. The ceremony ended with refreshments and gladness of heart. Many gifts were also given to the elderly persons and they parted company. The pupils of the ZTF Bilingual Primary and Nursery School went on Christmas break on Thursday, 15 December 2022. The event kicked off around 11 a.m. with the opening prayer, the singing of the national anthem. This was followed by a bilingual welcome address by Mr. Jeffak Nestor, headmaster of the Francophone section, where he outlined the work done since the beginning of the academic year and the targeted objectives. Then the pupils entertained the audience and showcased what they have learned through various activities including singing, dancing, sketches and cheer dance. The floor was afterwards given to the teaching staff who presented themselves as instruments in the hand of God to educate the little ones. Pastor Eli Arituyap ended this phase with a closing address where he reminded that our school aims at excellence both within the student and expressed outwardly. The ceremony ended with the distribution of end-of-year gifts to the pupils. The Hope Medical Clinic in Douala held its fifth campaign from the 13th to the 19th of December 2022. During the campaign, the services rendered range from free consultations to medical surgeries. Over 350 patients visited the clinic and had consultation services in diverse specialties, including cardiology, gynecology, ophthalmology, internal and general medicine, pediatry, and physiotherapy. Dr. Patrice Duncan, the director of the clinic, expressed his wish for medical doctors in every specialty of the medical field. These, he said, will enable the clinic to improve its services rendered. As part of his tour in Eastern Africa, Pastor Jean de Dieu Wachi arrived Rwanda, and specifically Kigali, on 19 December 2022. On the same day, he started the evangelism and exhortation tour in the locality of Gihara with 46 conversions and two families who accepted to host house churches. On 20 December, Pastor Jean de Dieu with the national leader of the work in Uganda, Pastor Jean de Gou, pursued their evangelism and exhortation tour producing 22 conversions and 23 healings. 
the tour continued on the 21st December 2022 in Rimbogo with an attendance of 400 people, 110 conversions, as well as 128 healings. The tour is to continue on 22nd and 23rd December 2022 in the localities of Rubavu Muzanze and Kibagabaga respectively. The tour will be followed with a session of the School of Knowing and Serving God from 24th to 30th December 2022 at the National Base in Kibagabaga. Also, as part of his ministry in Rwanda, Pastor Jean de Dieu held a meeting with the leaders of the Christian Missionary Fellowship International in Kigali on the theme Confessing and Manifesting Love. He urged the brethren to confess and manifest love towards the Lord, the brethren, their partners when applicable, and to do so through gifts and words of blessing for one another. Note that about 40 brethren attended this meeting. Pastor Alain Zefa visited the saints in Morocco from 3rd to 12th December 2022. He landed in Casablanca on 3rd December and on the same day, he held a meeting with the leaders of CMFI in Casablanca. The next day, he ministered in a joint service where God moved mightily through conversions, healings and deliverances. From 5th to 7th December, Brother Alain ministered in Marrakesh, Casablanca, and Tangier, respectively. On the 8th, he taught the saints from the city of Kenitra, and on the 10th, he had a meeting with the youth and life group in Casablanca. During the second joint service on the 11th of December, the Lord moved further with multiple deliverances, healings, and breaking of ties. Note that 34 conversions, 11 restorations, 15 commitments to water baptism, 60 deliverances, and 6 healings were recorded within the mission. Pastor Alan left Morocco on the 12th of December to Dakar. Pastor Alan Zefa visited the saints in Morocco from 3rd to 12th December 2022. He landed in Casablanca on 3rd December and on the same day, he held a meeting with the leaders of CMFI in Casablanca. The next day, he ministered in a joint service where God moved mightily through conversions, healings, and deliverances. From 5th to 7th December, Brother Alain ministered in Marrakesh, Casablanca, and Tangier, respectively. On the 8th, he taught the saints from the city of Kenitra, and on the 10th, he had a meeting with the youth and life group in Casablanca. During the second joint service on the 11th of December, the Lord moved further with multiple deliverances, healings, and breaking of ties. Note that 34 conversions, 11 restorations, 15 commitments to water baptism, 60 deliverances, and 6 healings were recorded within the mission. Pastor Alan left Morocco on the 12th of December to Dakar. As part of their November missionary trip, Brother Bernardin and his co-workers penetrated the locality of Manigri Igani. This locality of Central West Benin is dominated by Islamism and occultism. In this trip, Brother Bernardin and his team faced fierce opposition from the Imams who instructed that the brethren should not be given hospitality in any form. Besides, they took action to cause the missionaries to be expelled from the village. But thanks to the Lord, this initiative failed. Faced with this, the saints decided to meet the notables to explain to them the goal of their mission. During this meeting, the notables seized the opportunity to express the greatest need in the village, which was the reopening of the market. They explained that, the market was very critical in the economic life of the locality, and since it has closed, they have spent about 10 million consulting native doctors, yet in vain. They then promised that if the prayers of the brethren produced results, 
they would give themselves to Jesus and ban any other religion except faith in Christ. The brethren reassured the notables that the Lord is well capable of doing it, and for that purpose, they carry out a prayer walk in the market, going around the market seven times. Note that the brethren also preach the gospel to the inhabitants of the village. They reached out to 200 people and 24 were converted. 20 of these were former Maosi. They also had a debate with the imams of the locality and held a session of deliverance and baptism into the Holy Spirit. Two people spoke in new tongues and many deliverances were recorded. Before this mission, just one evangelical church existed in this locality which had long closed down. The church hall that had been left bushy was recovered by the brethren for the meeting with new converts. Note further that Brother Bernardin has started training a young convert to lead the nascent work in the locality. This brings us to the end of our news edition for today. For more updates, visit our YouTube channel RTVC English. Thanks for your kind attention and God bless you.